Hi, my name is Keith Cooper and uh, in this uh, short video I'm going to try and address a question I've been asked quite a few times and uh, an area where I think there's probably a bit of uncertainty and that involves setting up dual display systems and how you handle uh, a screen like this which is a BenQ SW2700 uh, which is a hardware calibrated screen um, how do you handle this differently to how you might handle the screen here on this old MacBook, which is calibrated using software and is calibrated internally. Now, when I set up screen, I need to calibrate and profile. Now, the terms tend to get used interchangeably, but they are two different things. Calibration is setting your screen to a known state. So in terms of calibration, this particular screen is set to a white point of D65. And this one is set to D50. Now I'm doing this just to show it. Uh, it's nowhere near as obvious to me looking at the screen than it probably is on the video. But anyway, this is a bluer, uh, warmer colour temperature. This is a higher colour temperature, I should say. And this is a lower colour temperature, a warmer one. This may have some benefits for doing print, but it's something needs using with care. And I'll go into that in, a, in another video sometime. This is just about setting up. This is a hardware calibrated monitor. A lot of high-end monitors have what's called hardware calibration. And the reason for that is that the calibration can be done far more, far more accurately and far more precisely inside the display hardware than it can in software or via the display card, effective display card in your computer. So I can calibrate and profile these two monitors independently. Now on my Mac, they are two complete separate screens. Now they're linked in that I can move things from one to another, but from a system point of view, they are com two completely independent devices. Think of it as a separate graphics card for each particular uh, device. It would be the same if I had this as a desktop computer connected up to another screen. Um, but each one needs calibrating and profiling. Now, for this one, the ideal solution is to use the BenQ software, free software that comes is available for the screen. That uses an external device now that could be something like an i1 display or data color spider x these are color emitters um, i've looked at using these elsewhere if you're curious um, i put one of these up in front of the screen the software runs it displays a load of colors it measures the colors that the screen gives out compared to the colors that the software is sending to the screen and uses that to calibrate the monitor to a known state, in this case D50, and a particular brightness. And it creates a profile, which is what describes the characteristics of the screen. Now that profile is used both by the operating system and by any software that you use that is color managed. So if I'm using Photoshop, and both these images are displayed in Photoshop, Photoshop is using the display color management. It's using the profile to display images. Now that means that the profile governs how the images look. The profile just describes how the screen is. The calibration doesn't come into it that. So we've got to separate the two, calibration and profiling. So for this, it's really simple. I run the BenQ software, it generates a profile, sets it to calibration what I want, away we go. What about this one? Well, in this case, I haven't got software to do it, but fortunately, both the data color one here and the x right one here come with their own calibration software. And this is where the confusion can arise. For this screen here, I will run either the x right software or the data color software and produce a calibration and profile for this screen. The calibration is done internally here and effectively I have a calibrated and profiled screen. Now being a laptop screen, it's not the greatest of quality, but it's, it's not bad. So I use 
the X-Ripe or Data Color profile for this. That profile includes calibration information that the computer uses to set the screen. Obviously, I don't need calibration information for this screen because the BenQ software will actually do calibration inside the monitor. What that means is that the BenQ software produces a profile that goes here that Photoshop or the operating system or Lightroom or whatever you want is using to display the image. The calibration that the BenQ software does resides in here and I can change that if need be but if you're curious about that have a look at the uh, BenQ reviews I've done both on the Northlight site and uh, a more recent one of uh, a video as well. So you use third-party software to create your profile calibration for this. Use the BenQ software for this one. Do not use the Data Color or X-Rite software for producing a profile for this display. First of all, the X-Rite or Data Color software has no way of adjusting the hardware calibration of this monitor. That's a BenQ feature. That's done by their, their software. It can create a profile all right, because the profile lives here on the computer and is used by software. But that profile will contain calibration information. That calibration information will get applied in the computer and will in a way potentially be double calibrated. Now, what it really means is that calibration is then split between here and here, and that's not good. Um, it's an ill-defined situation, so we don't want it. So the simple thing is use the monitor software for the monitor. Use the X-Rite software or the data color software for this. Keep them apart. Um, and that will work perfectly well. Um, but the key thing to take away from this is you use one of these with the BenQ software but you don't use their software with it. So these are just being used as measuring devices. Now, hopefully that's, that's clear. If anyone's got any questions, please do ask in the, uh, in the comments or anything. Hopefully this will have explained it. Um, quite a few people have asked me related questions about this. Monitor calibration is a vital step in your image quality, whether you print or not, even if you just edit on the screen, it's useful. But the best one is to have hardware calibration, but make sure you don't mix the software the wrong way. You will get software with these, just use it for this one here. Um, so please do ask. Uh, I can't answer any detailed PC related questions because as I say, I've not used a Windows PC for over 20 years. So my knowledge is very, very out of date. But the principles I've set forth here are exactly the same, whether it's a Mac or a PC. So hopefully that's of use. Uh, thank you very much.